Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This will be the third episode of this Red Sea Reefer series. In this episode, we will be talking about some of the new SPS I got during the last two weeks and moving over some of the fish from the quarantine system. Before we dive right in, this is kind of where I left you guys off two weeks ago. So in the last video, I was aquascaping and moving all the corals from the holding tank over here and mounting them onto the rocks. There's a new face you guys haven't seen yet that I'll kind of show you guys later in this video. But yeah, let's get started. Alright, so about a week and a half ago, I picked up three frags from V3S Coral Reefer. He had a Pikachu frag, an Eternal Flame frag, and this other one that I really can't pronounce. Um, I think this one's the Pikachu, the smaller one right here is the Eternal Flame. And for some reason, the third bag kind of sank to the bottom. Maybe because it was like kind of a thicker frag, I don't know. So yeah, there it is. Alright, so here's a closer look of the three frags. This first one is the smaller one called the Eternal Flame. The second one is called the Worldwide Coral's Red Polyp Clyfascia or something like that. And this last one is the Pikachu, which is, has some really nice colorations in red polyps. So yeah, um, here's what they look side by side. They're all really nice and I'm honestly a pretty big fan of red acros. So hopefully these grow out really well. I'm trying to show you guys a side view, but with the light and the like, orange lens, it's kind of hard. In terms of pricing, these frags range from $30 to $40, I think, with the $40 being the larger frag and this little tiny one being like $30. So yeah, here's the last look before I mount them onto the rocks. Alright, moving on to fish. Here is the Royal Grandma. I'm not sure if I showed you guys in the last video, but I got this guy in from a shipment and he's been sitting inside my other system for about a week and he's eating really well. This is my Tumini Tang. Although he does not look good and moving in this clip, I promise you he has been eating and overall healthy. Here are the first few moments of the Tumini Tang in the new Red Sea Reefer 350. So I went with the Tumini Tang because one, they're the smallest of the usual tangs and they eat really good algae and they're super easy to keep compared to some of the other ones like the Achilles Tang. And honestly, even though his color is not super bright, I think he looks perfectly fine. And in terms of pricing, this guy is a lot cheaper than some of the other ones like the Yellow Tang. As you guys can see here, this guy is already doing work inside my tank. I see him picking up my rocks all the time, so that's really good. I'm having a hard time trying to get him to eat seaweed off the clip, but I do see him eating it off the rocks whenever I tie it to a rubber band. If you guys are masters at keeping tanks, let me know in the comments your tips and tricks to getting them to eat off a clip. Alright, moving on to the Roy Grandma. Not sure if you guys paid attention, but you can see his head poking out of the rock right there. Surprisingly, this guy has been a really big bully to my yellow assessor Baslet, but hopefully the aggression tones down as they get used to the tank. So another local reefer gave me some free frags. I basically gave him some of these XR15 light clips for free and he returned a favor with some corals. So he gave me those zoas right there and this redactus shroom. It's really nice, it's like orange with like a green center. I know redactus shrooms grow like crazy so I'm not sure where I'll be putting this guy. In the meantime, I'm gonna try to get him to attach to a rock. Alright, back to the three frags I got earlier in the week. I think this was like the third day after they've been in the tank. So as you guys can see here, the pops are kind of extending. I really like the coloration of this one. It's kind of like different. I've never seen one of this coloration like yellow, green, and red at the same time. And this guy, you can kind of see where the eternal flame name comes from with the tips. They're kind of like a light yellowish. But yeah, that's what they look like so far. Next we have the Worldwide Corals Aussie Gold Torch. I'm not sure what type it is or if it even has a name. But this guy has been doing really well surprisingly in keeping its color. I kid you not, my camera picks this torch up and it looks like that in person also. So I'm really impressed by 
my orange clownfish she really loves this thing and it doesn't seem too bothered by her hosting in it so I will leave her at it remember that one Yuma mushroom I was talking about that spit out babies like nothing well the mom just got another baby I think this is like her fourth one but here is the other shroom inside this little acclimation cup and I think it's slowly attaching onto that rock. Here's a face you don't see too often, it's my Mandarin Gobi. This is one of the best shots I have of him before he pretty much went bye bye behind this rock. But he has been doing really well with the pods I've been feeding him. Alright here are the final two frags I picked up like a few days ago while I'm editing this video. It is the Oregon Blue Tort and the Miyagi Tort. So after my organ blue tort died from pretty much the acro eating flatworms, I really wanted to find another one. It's hard to find blue corals in the hobby and there's something about the organ tort that just looks really nice. So I picked up a frag of this. It's kind of hard to show you guys what it looks like under these blue lights and my camera doesn't pick it up too well. But the main difference I see between the organ tort and the Miyagi tort is that the Miyagi tort has kind of like a green coloration in the center as you guys can see right there it looks kind of yellowish green but i won't really know until i see both of these grow out into like colonies here's a quick clip of the tank i picked up these frags from as you guys can see here he has some really nice colonies and yeah his tank was really beautiful he had a bunch of tangs and yeah really nice for now, I have these guys mounted on the overflow. I plan to get some magnetic rocks to put on like the back of my tank. I got some suggestions from an appropriate reefer, but I'm not sure when I'll be picking those rocks up. Update on the Euphilia Garden. Everything looks like it's doing really well. The bleach hammer is actually starting to come back. Hopefully it goes back to its old self. And while I was at his house, the other local reefer, he had this little tiny hammer I saw in like the corner of his tank. I asked him for that little piece and he sold it for me for like 10 bucks. I thought it was pretty worth it. Um, it's kind of hard to show you guys right now, but its color is kind of like a light pink and orange at the same time. It is definitely unique and hopefully I'll be able to show you guys next time. I decided to mount these guys near the top of the arch I have on the right side of my tank. Here's a little close up if my camera can focus here in the front. I actually kind of like broke off a piece while cleaning my tank with the Tunzi scraper I just got. But overall it seems really healthy and I don't think it's too bothered by the small injury. You guys can see there at the top that's like missing a little chunk. But yeah so I put the Pikachu near the front. I put this one on the side because I heard that it grows outwards. It looks like it's kind of shaded right here but Overall, I think this would be a great spot for it. And the last frag I have kind of in the back because according to V3S, this one grows more upwards. So I'm trying to get like a good um, upward growing acro in the background. So yeah, that's kind of it right now. That's the most of the good stuff. Moving on to bad stuff uh, besides this flip snail. I do have some of like the ugly face coming in a lot of random cyano i think that might have came from the old rocks so besides that everything else has been looking really good i think this is also some green cyano i'll try to figure out a way to deal with this i don't want to go straight into kimmy clean and i'm trying to let the tank kind of stabilize over the next few weeks but overall i'm really Looking forward to seeing this tank grow out. Don't mind this little piece. I've been putting seaweed onto this little biomedia for my tank. But yeah, um, just some ugly stuff. Good thing though is I am growing a little bit of coralline algae. It's kind of hard to see here, but in this clip right here, you can see it kind of growing well on the rocks. That about does it for this video. If you guys like the content, please make sure you like and subscribe. And you can leave a comment on what you think about my SPS placements or just any questions you might have. Here's a quick clip of my conch cleaning the sand bed. 
And yeah, I will see you guys in the next one.